Thank you for joining Effortless Attraction. My name is Evelyn McAleer. I'm the author of A Life You Want, Effortless and The Woman's Journey. I'm a life coach, business mentor and inspirational speaker. And my greatest value is making a difference in people's lives. So I hope through these podcasts, I can make a difference to your life. Today's show was sponsored by Skytask Aerial Imaging, cinematic drone imaging for TV production and business promotion. Visit skytaskarealimaging.co.uk. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, whoever gets to listen to today's podcast. And I am joined by the beautiful Diane Inverarity from Scotland. Diane is a business development manager and coach. Diane, you're most welcome to the show today. Thank you for having me, Aislinn. Diane, I am going to start with a word. I know it's a kind of a taboo word, or perhaps one that you didn't use that much yourself, but we'll get to the reasons as to why. The word retirement, people look forward to it. They have hopes and dreams when they reach retirement age, but for you, it felt very different. Could you give us a wee insight into that, Diane? Yes, I certainly could. Retirement to me was a word, funnily enough, I never used. Um, And it all began probably a year ago when I probably manifested my redundancy after working in corporate for over 20 years. And it was then that people kept saying, you're going to enjoy your retirement. And it was a word that didn't resonate. It didn't bring me joy. It It was something that was alien. To me, that was what somebody done when it's what old people done. And I didn't regard myself as old or right that's me done feet up I never ever seen myself like that so it's funny the word retirement just meant something alien something that to be honest I would never do um, or consider I'd still Mm -hmm. so much to give so much to learn we're constantly growing I was so into spirituality and development and that never stops so retire from what I was happy to give up the job I was in because that had come to a natural end. But now what? What's the next step? The time came then to give up the work rather than retire in your mind. So what Mm -hmm. was the changes that went through? You've been so used to getting up at a certain time, travelling, and you were travelling internationally and travelling all over Mm. the place. So what happened then? Initially, there was an excitement because, you know, it was travel can be tiresome as well as exciting. So... I was quite keen that if I'd never saw an airport again, that would be fine, unless I was going on holiday. But for me, once the dust had settled, I just, you know, I had time in my hands and it was almost like you get up when you want, do what you want. Think. So after about a couple of weeks, I thought, if this is retirement or what people call retirement, no. I think what happens then is people get scared because for me, certainly, what changes is your identity. And identity isn't, it's it's you, it's what you are, or put it in another way, how you see yourself. So I could never see myself as somebody that was retired. But then I was this I had to create a new identity because I was no longer travelling internationally. I was no longer known as Miss Such and Such and um, a nickname for the brand I worked for because I've been there that long. Um, so who was I? Mm-hmm. And that is scary but it's really exciting at the same time and during that time it wasn't just the redundancy that word retirement you had time to think to stop so you're always doing 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 we're getting our own way but when you've got time to sit and think like what's next for me again that can be scary but it really is exciting and life doesn't stop it's the pace that stops. Your mind stops running away with you all the time. And you have time. And so a lot of lovely things came in. Like, as you know, Evelyn, I met you. I joined the Purple Roses. I, um, I was able to read things I'd never been able to do, things I hadn't been able to do. But all the while in the back, and it really, it was a trigger for me to say, oh, you're retired now? No. Retired from what? And, you know, I had met people that were younger than me saying, I can't wait to retire. And I say, then what are you going to do? Hell, I'll yeah. But then what? Well, I'll have a holiday. Then what? 
See, once you've done everything you want to do, then what? Because I do believe that old, if you don't use it, you lose it. And I don't want to be that big slipper. It's an energy thing. And I've seen it when I worked in the skincare companies that I worked in. You don't grow old, you, you, you lose energy. And when that energy starts to deplete, you can see it. You can see it in people. I've met people who have <clears throat> vertical retired, met them a year later, and they have totally retired. It's like the life drained from them. Mm. And that scared me. And I thought, never. Because I've seen what I didn't want to happen. Yeah. So a lot of exciting and good things happened because it is about mindset. It totally is about identity, how you see you. And you can build a new identity. So yeah. you can change. And that's the thing <clears throat> that we can change if we become very attached. So Diana and Variety, if you were so attached to this is what, who I am, this is what I do. Mm. And what next to so then the confusion and the fear of what else can I do? And I think sometimes where you had the freedom to choose, I'm ready to step away now, where some people it's an automatic your job's no longer here and they haven't had time to mentally prepare for this and they've mm -hmm. just been so attached to this is all I know and perhaps mm -hmm. fear uh, would change so how is life now and we're only in the, the beginning of the new transition a couple of years now perhaps Diane is it or less it's probably it's less it's that well just over I would probably say um, a year past June so we're still in the early stages and a lot happened in my life at that point to, um, you know, I actually started to think, you know, I'm a forsaken here. It, it was like so much was happening. And then you remember to remember, you remember the, the tools that you have, that life shows up as you are. So who was I? So learning from yourself as well, Evelyn, it's like life shows up as you are. So I started to say, well, who am I? And, just something simple as I am love, I am safe. And I really started to know initially, feel the changes take place. I think changes take place when you're consistent. Mm. And I thought, you know, what have I got to lose here? So I was consistent and my mindset, how I thought, what I would let in, like I would choose thoughts. Thoughts can take over us and they can run away with us. I call it the, the voice in the head, the script. We have this script that we collect over the years. And when bad things happen to us, we go into this, so what did I do then? And we keep repeating these patterns. And I was determined not to do that. So whenever that voice in my head came in, I go, no, I'm not choosing that, what happened years ago or 10 years ago, or to feel like that and to think like that. Because how you feel, the words you say to yourself, they do create your reality. I don't think that. I know that. I've seen it in my own life. Mm -hmm. And when I started to do that consistently, things started to change. I started to change. I started to lose weight. I started to just feel better. And then out the blue, a role came into my life. We not even to interview for. Uh, it's like, on my terms, I wanted freelance. I wanted three days a week. This is what, yeah. Everything. It's like the universe was saying, yes, yes, yes. Yes, because I wasn't hesitant. I got to that point where, what have I got to lose? We're always provided for. I do believe there's, we're protected. The universe looks after us. So if that's true, then what have I got to lose? And then recently, um, I had somebody else, another brand come to me to say, look, could you promote me as well? So I don't know what's happening. And I'm not questioning it. I'm just going to go, okay, that's absolutely fabulous. But let's look at that. But again, I'm doing it on my terms. And I can honestly say I've never been happier. And this year, uh, I, was, I went to a friend's wedding in New York, actually. And we were just about to come home. And I said to my husband, in a year, look how much things have changed. Look how much I've changed. If I could have went back to that time in my life where at one part I had went through some trauma, and I thought, if I could look then and go, don't worry, in a year's time, this is how you're going to be. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen. We have to go through the lesson. We get in our way, and sometimes we can't see that we create a reality. 
and see when you're in and I know when things are going great it's oh I'm great I'm positive I'm up there it's, it's so easy but this is when we need these tools this is when we need these mind tools we when you need it most when you think everything's gone it's for what for whatever reason that is when you need to keep tapping into source keep connected because yeah. Even though you're going to go through that roller coaster, I felt like I was thrown in a washing machine came out the other end. It's that other end. I look back and I never thought I'd see it now, but I'm glad it happened because I would not know what I know now. I wouldn't be the person that I'm now, but I still maintain I will never retire. I may change my lifestyle, but I'll never stop using my mind. I'll never stop being curious. Louise, hey, look what age she was. And she was still active to the day she died. And but isn't it why not? Say, when you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life, Diane. It's true. I, I think it's true. people and see it as hard work. I can't wait for retirement. This is high. Don't like what I do. Don't like where I'm at. And of course, then, as you say, our energy gets depleted. Sometimes we're too long new in a place and we should have changed a long time ago, but we don't because there's a safety to it and we stay on and there's all this. But the ability to release and let go, it's no longer served me. I'm not bringing joy to this anymore, nor is it bringing joy to me. Now I get to reincarnate, reinvent myself. I don't know how this is going to happen, but I do know the tools that I have to put in place. And a key one that you mentioned there is being consistent. That is key. We we tend to, when things go wrong or things that we don't want to happen, we implode on ourselves. We attack ourselves. You can't. You are an idiot. You can't do this. You can't. Why? It's it's turning it around going, wait a minute. You can do anything you want. And it's that consistency. It's during the day, even when you catch yourself saying, oh, you're an idiot. You can, it's, it's changing. It's going, no. And something I learned from you as well, Evelyn, is you know, that word. It's I love and honour myself. I love me and you know life shows up as you are I am love so how you feel inside I truly believe what we don't attract what we want we attract what we are mm -hmm. so if we are peace we what we feel becomes a reality and that could be if we feel negative we all know some days we, you know we wake up and think this is going to be one shitty day and by five o'clock it's got worse and you think well I did say that in the morning. So it's in the morning, it's setting your day up. It's going to be a fantastic day. You know, I'm happy beyond my wildest dreams. Even asking, like, why am I so happy? Because the universe is going to have to come up with, why is she so happy? We might find something to make her yeah. happy. Um, and it's catching those thoughts. And I always think of them a bit like when negative thoughts come in, everything like a conveyor belt. I let them go on the conveyor belt. And I don't engage with them. I go, that's nice. Let them go by now. I'm normal, human. Of course, sometimes I will engage. And there is times I go back. And, but I'm quicker to catch myself now. You mentioned something there a wee minute ago too, Diane. You know, when you start your morning off with good intentions, and yes, there may be mornings that we wake up and we don't feel so great. And I, I think to mind that saying that we have to think greater than we feel on days. You have a fabulous morning ritual and you do it consistently. I know a lot of people start and they give up. Tell us about your wee morning rituals. Well, the first thing I do, get up, the first thing I say is thank you. Go and brush my teeth. And the first thing I do is journal and almost like create my day. So I'll write it as if, I'm sitting in my bed at night and my day's already happened. This is an example. Thank you, thank you for an amazing day. It was amazing in every single way. I was so glad to be back on the Purple Rose call. Love is all there is and I felt it this morning. Everybody was there. It was fantastic. I am deserving and so grateful today that I remembered my iPad password. We had a beautiful dry walk with the boys. That's my two dogs. No rain that happened. I received the most amazing news today. My podcast with Evelyn went so well. 
I feel really organized for the week ahead, and so on and so on. And it's amazing what's come to fruition. It's amazing. I would I used to write things like to the I will get that interview today. I'll go for that job. It is mine. It's mine before I've got there. I, I would put it in prep the past as if it had already happened. Whatever our intention is on or focus on, you know, if we chose to write something down today, I hate my life, everything's wrong, I've no money in the bank, why does things keep going wrong? We'll always prove ourselves right. No matter what we think, what we believe, you're always going to be right. So would it not be better to be right in a more place where you want to be at? And of course, as you say, Dan, all of the the mystery of life and the magic of life, I do believe whenever the things just come to you, people come to you, experiences come to you. And these are things that we could never foresee in our lives, but certainly what you had been doing was putting in the foundations, your thoughts, your words, your actions. And of course, we all have to go through the turmoil and not so pleasant places. And those are the tests. There's there's where we grow. And every challenge, we have an opportunity to grow from it. But in doing that and in doing your consistent with journaling and your meditation, showing up on groups whenever you can, then you're forecasting that out to the future. That's how our life all unfolds certainly there are experiences that come about in all of our lives that is outside of our control but we have full responsibility on how we choose to experience it through the years i'd look to the outside it's you it's you it's you they are negative you're negative what i know now for sure is i always look within now so if Mm. something's constantly showing up as it's negative it's not making us feel good then what inside me am I not feeling good about? Mm-hmm. And if you dig deep enough, and, you know, sometimes the egos are a big thing. It's like, no, no, it's them, it's them. It's never about anybody else. It's I feel it's always about me, going through my experience. But certainly when I think better thoughts and I try to project kindness, I try to project love to myself first, I am love, I am love, I am peace. Things start to change. But what most people do is they go, oh, it's changed a wee bit. So they go back to normal. It's it's keeping this consistency. Mm-hmm. And that's what I know for sure. It's like almost like somebody says, oh, I went on a diet on Monday. I've given up Thursday because it didn't work. But yeah, they've ate bad food for the last 10 years. Like four days, it's never worked. And the same affirmations, have I tried saying that? I'm happy, I'm happy. Oh my God, it just got worse. Because inside, they didn't believe it. And you don't have to believe it first. I am happy, I am peace, I am love. You have to become it, think it first before it turns up in reality. It's down to self. It's how what we say to ourselves, the, the words that we think about ourselves, or if someone gives us a compliment, can I accept that? <laughs> um, would I know peace if it came and sat on my knee? Do I shut off from accepting love? Mm-hmm. So many things. And it is it's like a, a, an onion. You just keep peeling back the layers and the layers yeah. and the layers. So, yeah, the magic and the wonderful of um, effortless manifestation and life unfolding. And that one mm-hmm. word that can mean a whole lot to a lot of people, retirement, but something not to be feared, because as you say, retiring from what? You know, from I what? now get an opportunity <laughs> to reinvent myself, to reincarnate into what is it that I would like to do? And you didn't have to work overly hard at this because the opportunities came to you. It did. And that's, that's what sometimes I have to pinch myself. I think, well, you know, just in taking in that inspired action, this person came into mind. I wondered how she was. And I took inspired action. Now, I could have easily have went, I wonder how she is and carried on. Mm-hmm. But I'll give her a wee message. And from that, just small thing. Yes. And, you know, I think, and I look back, what if I just thought about her and done nothing? Yeah. And most of us do that or we get in our own way, like you think about some something, maybe not necessarily a person. I'd like to do that. I'd like to go there. And then immediately, we go, no, no you. That's for other people. 
So it goes yeah. away. But what if we did? Yes, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. And say yes more. Again, that's taught me about inspired action. It's um, If you've got a niggle, go for it. Take that action. Yeah. So it's the thought, the feeling, the feeling as though the, the wish is already fulfilled. You've journaled it as though the day has already happened. And, yep. uh, and then we take inspired action. And life is magic. It is magic. You know, when we take a look back and think there's no way I could have foreseen any of those things. It's just magic how people are brought into their lives for certain events and experiences to occur and happen. Diane, I am going to say... Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, it has been an absolute pleasure. And I hope whoever gets to listen to the podcast, as I always say, my greatest value is to make a difference in people's lives. So, Dan, you certainly have made a difference in my life today. I hope it made a difference in Thank yours. You. And whoever gets an opportunity, to listen, I hope we have made a difference in your life. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you. Today's show was sponsored by Skytask Aerial Imaging, cinematic drone imaging for TV production and business promotion. Visit skytaskaerialimaging.co.uk.